Welcome to Lexington. I'm Rebecca Logan, Executive Director of Main Street Lexington, and we are so honored to be recognized for our lovely downtown by the Garden Club of Virginia. We're very proud of how lovely our downtown is looking. In the past five years, we have filled 17 vacant storefronts, 26 new businesses have arrived. Main Street Lexington was instrumental in having our city designated a Main Street community. So then we've had a bunch of private partnerships where some major renovations were done in our downtown buildings. It's just been a, a collaboration of many folks. This tree here was a the last of the tree planting projects that was done under Rockridge Conservation Council and on the Historic Lexington Foundation's tree committee. The tree that was selected is now 15 years old, 15, 20 years old, so it's at about two-thirds of its height and it'll get larger. As you can see, it's situated on a very prominent corner of, of the Sheridan Row building and the bank, which is a drive-through. So every last street tree opportunity in this town has been fully developed because trees were never on Lexingtonians' minds as commercial people uh, and they just weren't any program of street tr trees or shade. In our day and age we're a lot more attentive to shade. This town is warming up pretty quickly in the summer as we, as we watch the climate change and so trying to establish as much shade as we can has been on everybody's mind for a good long time and now luckily the Main Street people have seen well if we're at the limits of where we can fit a tree in, how can we add further plants? When we look back in the past in Lexington, there wasn't a lot of greenery. And part of it is we have all this hardscaping that we can't plant into. And so this was a perfect solution to, to bring trees and flowers right onto the sidewalks. We've installed all along Main Street these beautiful uh, hydrangea uh, trees. And so we bought these pots. Uh, they're self-watering pots, so we only have to water them once a week. And the trees have just done amazing. We have about 12 of them scattered around downtown. And they've become really popular. People really like them. We get a lot of, a lot of compliments on them. Um, so we've been really happy to be involved in that. It's one of the many projects that Main Street Lexington has done to beautify uh, downtown Lexington. In the late winter of 2015, we were approached by uh, the, the garden tour uh, group and they asked us at Main Street if we could encourage the, the downtown businesses to put out planters and flowers because the garden tour that spring was going to be focused on Main Street, downtown homes and businesses. And so we were really excited about the idea and approached the businesses. They loved the idea. Some of them were a little intimidated because they didn't have much gardening experience. So we thought, oh wow, you know what? We just need to match them up with some of these really talented garden club members in our community. And not only did they create beautiful floral displays, but that just cleverly interpreted so many of the businesses. One in particular that I remember that was a big hit Everybody who stopped outside of the walk of that outfitter laughed, commented, loved that the fact that they took two old worn hiking shoes and a backpack and filled them up with blooming flowers. That was just one example of some of, some of the fun things that people did. And that uh, turned into a friendly competition that has grown, I believe, every year. The garden baskets have always been just a beautiful part of downtown Lexington and we've been a supporter of it for many years. We sponsor two baskets every year and um, just love that it enhances the downtown landscape. All of our local businesses love seeing it. It brings people downtown. They love to see the beautification, not just their storefronts, but it kind of adds to the whole feel of downtown. And so they love being a part of it and just seeing the beautiful baskets. There are 46 of these baskets throughout the downtown area. Um, they're put together for us by Dave Frazier of Fancy Hill Plants. Usually the baskets go up around May, around Mother's Day. They hang here all summer looking great and come down in October. They're trailing ivy geranium baskets, so they're 
They're pretty tough and can stand up to our summer heat. Public Works uh, waters the baskets all summer. They fertilize them when they need to, and then when it's time to take them down, they get them down so we can use them again. Each year, a different club takes responsibility for making sure that the project's on track. Um, we're funded from a variety of sources. The county council, of course, makes a contribution. Um, the individual clubs contribute, and then the Chamber of Commerce makes a generous contribution towards these baskets each year. Twenty-five years ago, the local VFW and the Military Officers Association decided that Lexington needed a memorial to their veterans of Rockbridge County. After much debate and deciding where the monument would go, this spot was chosen. But not only is it this honoring the veterans, but it's a perfect site being the public square. We try to keep the gardens up constantly because of being such so much in the public eye. Our color scheme normally is red, white, and blue. And as many people know, the blue flowers are very hard to find. We are lucky to have the County Council of Garden Clubs. They help us. When the watering man comes around to water the hanging baskets, he also waters our garden, which keeps us from having to carry water here. One person is in charge every two years of the entire garden. They plan it, they decide when you change the flowers in the fall and in the spring. There is something blooming here all the time. Even in the heart of winter, there are pansies. The loveliest thing is how people will come along and speak to you and thank you for what you've done. It's just an honor to do what we do. The thing that's been amazing about Lexington is the redevelopment that we've seen, the businesses that have opened up in downtown Lexington as a result of more people coming, uh, working with Main Street Lexington and a downtown development program that the city embarked upon to improve the thoroughfares, um, uh, wayfinding for uh, visitors as well as citizens, and the alley that we find ourselves in. Uh, beautiful planters and uh, fresh plants that are here year-round to make uh, downtown Lexington a little brighter, a little fresher. With the partnership of Main Street Lexington and the City of Lexington, uh, we have a much more um, uh, in enjoyable environment. Our streets are fairly narrow and our sidewalks in many instances even more narrow. So being able to uh, work smart and creatively to have these downtown plantings to provide some shade, some uh, fresh oxygen for uh, visitors and um, uh, locals alike, it goes a long way. And this was one of the projects that we helped fund these beautiful planters uh, right here in the alleyway to sort of add a little color and design to our fair city and along with all of the other groups that have been partnering with Main Street Lexington, um, it has made a tremendous difference. Rockbridge Area Master Gardeners take care of these gardens and have for probably the past 20 years or so. The gardens have been here since the 20s. This is the Campbell House, which is the home of the uh, Historical Society, Rockbridge Historical Society. And in 1929, Hale Houston owned the property and he put in all of these gardens. In fact, there was a greenhouse below me. The town was so impressed by his gardens that he was actually made an honorary member of the Garden Club at that time. So there have been gardens here since 1929. The reason these plants have been picked is because we've tried to show what people can grow in Rockbridge County what's easy, what's fairly low maintenance. So there's a sort of a theme to each garden. Right now, I'm standing in the shade garden. These are perennial begonias in front of me. I mean, most people think of begonias as just annuals, but these are gonna come back every year and you don't have to replant them. So below us, there's a, this is a fairly new garden in the foundation of the old greenhouse. This is a healing medicine garden. And then along Randolph Street, that, those are all annuals that are planted. So those are planted to show people what cool annuals you can grow. So there's some unusual things out there that you might not see. You know, it's not your standard geranium. And this is a very popular place to have lunch in town. 
people that work in town come here to have lunch because it's so pleasant and it's always cool in the summer. So we know that um, Jackson was an avid gardener and he had a kitchen garden, kitchen garden being right outside the kitchen. And what we've tried to do here is recreate what we think Jackson might have had. You know, a typical kitchen garden in this area in the late 1850s, early 1860s. So we're growing mostly um, open pollinated heirloom varieties of vegetables. We've, we've got flowers um, for the pollinators. They wanted them near the kitchen so they could go out and get herbs or vegetables. But they wanted them to be hidden so they, they would surround them with flowers and fruit trees, which is basically what we've done here. So we've got flowers, roses, and annuals and perennial flowers around the outside. Some fruit trees, we've got apple trees, we have an apricot tree. It's a joint project between the Stonewall Jackson House and the Rock Ridge Area Master Gardeners. So we, this, this garden wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the Master Gardeners. We've got about six or eight Master Gardeners that are very loyal, that come every week when it's not too wet to work. And they plant, they weed, they harvest. But we don't use a rototiller. We don't use any mechanized tools. Jackson didn't have it at that time. We get visitors that come in, they just, they wander through the garden, spend a lot of time out here. We put this garden in probably about 12 or 13 years ago. It's Washington and Lee property and we lease it from them for a dollar a year. August is not the greatest month in the world for an herb garden because most plants like a Mediterranean climate and we've had so much rain lately. Especially in the spring, it's beautiful. And we're in a great location here. It is a little bit off the beaten path, but the carriage rides start down there at the end of Varner Lane. So while people are waiting for their historical carriage ride around town, they come over here and peruse the garden and sit in the gazebo and enjoy the scents and the fragrances. We try and cover both culinary, aromatic, medicinal. For our definitions in Herb Guild, any plant that has a use is an herb. So shrubs and trees can be herbs too, people don't think that. Right now you've got these towering dill plants, which are gonna go to seed pretty soon, but the swallowtails adore this plant. So we try and feed the pollinators too. We've caught a couple of local chefs down here chopping, which we haven't been real crazy about, but <laughs> it is a community garden. What can we do in Lexington to enrich the experience of, the, of a tourist coming to Lexington? And, the, and this was our answer. You know, sort of a, oh, if we put a brief history of each of these individuals as people are walking around town, then they're going to have um, a, a sort of instantaneous, oh my goodness, isn't that interesting? I didn't know that person lived in Rockbridge County or isn't it funny that this person did that? And a goal was to make history accessible, uh, it was to make it fun, uh, and often surprising and, and memorable. The committee wanted to choose a range of types of figures, not just to go from individuals, but to make sure we were representing different fields of life in Rockbridge. So we've got artists, we've got soldiers, we've got educators and writers. We've got the nation's first recorded streaker and the most notorious bank robber the county's ever seen. So that we hope those hooks uh, bring people in, have them talking with one another, provide anchors for schools to work with, uh, and then also give us some places for deep dives that other projects can grow out of. So tourism has long been a very big part of the fabric that weaves our community together and Lexington has been the centerpiece of that community. Visitors are charmed by our historic architecture, the cozy places that have been created for our visitors and residents alike. Our Main Street boasts some of the best food, award-winning lodging, great places to have an evening drink that you can find anywhere in the Commonwealth. And as we move into a fall, unlike we've ever seen before, we'll still be welcoming visitors to our gorgeous weather, our stunning landscapes, and our beautiful foliage.